Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to jimandjoy at EWTN.com. And today, our guest is Devin Shad. Now, Devin is the executive director of the Fathers of St. <clears throat> Joseph. He is the author of several books. You could go to his website, fathersofstjoseph.org. And we have had Devin on our show before, and he was so wonderful, we wanted him back. And God's doing more in his life. Absolutely. And so we wanted to give you all an update, especially on his ministry and the books that he's written and resources that are out there available to you so that we as a church, as a people of God, mm can celebrate fatherhood, that we can have a renewal and a great awakening and holy men of God would step forward and become who they are. And yeah. as Catherine of Siena said, become who you are and you'll set the world on fire. I remember one of his first books, Joseph's Way, which was just tremendous. Now he has this book, uh, Custos, uh, Total Consecration Through St. Joseph. 33-day uh, preparation for fullness of divine sonship. And there's a number of other books that he's written. So you really mm -hmm. do need to go to his website to find them all out, fathersofstjoseph.org or ew10rc.org. Uh, uh, may have a number of them as well. We love Devin. Yes. He's the real deal. And he has his own story. Maybe I'll share a little bit about it, how he became so uh, needy and impassioned uh, regarding St. Joseph and how that happened in his life. And I remember he, listening to his story and then, then reading. I mean, he's developed a spirituality. He hasn't mm -hmm. developed it. He's just kind of discovered it, you know, in, in St. Joseph. Who doesn't say a word, but you said Joseph in the context, and there it is. And I love that he has a spirituality. So it's not just books that you read and always oh, interesting you walk with. No, it's a spirituality you can live. Mm -hmm. And then he really equips uh, men in this way, in this spirituality, in this formation, and they can help lead other people. I mean, he makes fathers of St. Joseph who make fathers of St. Joseph mm -hmm. who make fathers of St. Joseph who make fathers of St. Joseph. So he's doing the whole deal. Yeah. It's really tremendous. Well, you know, it's like we say, the world needs EWTN, and we believe that with all of our hearts. The world needs EWTN. The, also, the world also needs mm. fathers. We need to differentiate who we are and who we're not. We are male. We are female. Mm. We need to become the holy men of God that God has called us to be. We don't need to shrink back and be afraid of who we are. We That's need right. to know it and then... God will empower oh. you to become it. Well, we've forgotten as a culture, and uh, Devin's going to bring us out of our mm. amnesia. Yes. And we're going to remember. We need to be fathered and to become real fathers, says Devin. They need a spiritual plan to unlock the fatherly power of God in their lives. We believe that each man is chosen by God for a unique purpose. Each man is given by God an indispensable mission. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back while well, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest is Devin Shad. He is the executive director of Fathers of St. Joseph. He's the author of several books. You could visit his website, fathersofstjoseph.org. And some of his books are available at ewtnrc.com. Fathers of St. Joseph. That is so wonderful. Mm. Well, Devin, we are so excited to have you back here on At Home. Yeah. And we want you to tell our family a little bit about what you've been doing, how COVID affected your ministry yeah. and all that God is doing. But then why is St. Joseph so important? Yeah, that's great. Yes. Yeah, so the COVID outbreak, it looked like a setback. You know, we're canceling all of our events and all of our speaking events. And then within that period of time, God just 
poured out his grace upon me and I wrote like nine books, right? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. And uh, then we wrote Custos, developed Custos, which is a blueprint, like a spiritual plan for guys' lives following St. Joseph for 33 days. So all that was written. And then Pope Francis announces the year of St. Joseph on the tail end of that. And so we had just printed these books and we're like, whoa, this is amazing. God is doing something really great here. And then even in the process with the COVID shutdown, Everybody's going to internet, trying to find out ways to be fed. And then suddenly LEAD, which is one of our men's group products and things like that, it was going worldwide. Austria, mm -hmm. Australia, Ireland, and groups were forming that we didn't even know about. So it's been, it's been a, a crazy ride, but it's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. And tell us about your family. So our family is great, of... yeah. Father of five daughters. Yeah. You need St. Joseph. <laughs> I do, yeah. I love it. I wouldn't change it. But you know what? Now I've got two grandsons, boys. So I finally got my boys. So, yeah, for my daughter. Yeah, so, so yeah, our family's good. Anna Marie's doing well. Um, but, you know, she's, she's had some struggles recently as well. But uh, she's always teaching us how to embrace the cross because, mm -hmm. really, her wheelchair is her cross, you mm -hmm. know? And her life coming to you all as part of the family was really instrumental mm -hmm. in leading you into a deeper knowledge and walk with St. Joseph. Your your wife saying to you, if I remember from the last time, you need to come home. Yeah. I think that you need to come yeah. home. Well, I am home and I'm doing good work, but what are you talking about? And this mm. kind of led you on to what does it mean to be at home? What does it mean to be a real man? Well, where do I go? Yeah, exactly. So I, you know, as a, I think as any young man, I was pursuing the world, you know, mm -hmm. power, prestige, popularity, possessions, pleasure, profit, all those things, mm -hmm. the six P's. And the one thing I didn't have was peace, mm -hmm. right? And peace comes mm -hmm. from doing God's will. And when Anna Marie had a hypoxic event, not a toxin, was transmitted to her brain, um, it was because of some nurse neglect. And by the time mm -hmm. they medevaced her out to a children's hospital a couple hours away, she suffered three clinical death experiences, permanent mm -hmm. brain injury followed. And when my wife saw Anna Marie for the first time on the respirator and life support, and I was involved in youth ministry, right. I'd just surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I was trying to start my own business. Mm -hmm. I was kind of living for the world. I, I had two other children. I thought I was being a good dad. I was checking the box. And she said, I need to come home and be a husband and father. And that was like a wake up call to me. I'm like, what does it mean to be a great father? What mm -hmm. does it really mean to be a great husband? And two things happened. I went on a pilgrimage halfway around the world. We had a spiritual guide and I was talking to her about this desire to serve the Lord. And she said, are you married? And I said, yeah, I'm married. And she said, are you a father? Yeah, I'm a father. She said, go home and be St. Joseph. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, who is St. Joseph? Is he that old guy who's yeah. bald, carries mm -hmm. around flowers, mm -hmm. you know? Who is a St. Joseph? And the other thing that happened on that trip is I went to confession to a Dominican priest, a friar, and he said, you will become a saint by means of your vocation, not outside of it. And that was like a wake-up call because I was pursuing all these other paths. Mm. But really, God is saying, your vocation is your path to glory, to sanctity. And we miss this. Even in the church, we miss this. We try all sorts of different things while avoiding the path that God's given us through our vocation. Mm -hmm. so you're saying marriage and the family. Marriage and the okay. family, being a husband and father. And mm -hmm. other things will come out of that. Yeah. But that's got to be right. That's huge, mm -hmm. I mean, what you've just said because there's such a drive within men and it can go the right way or the wrong way mm -hmm. or just gets confused. So it's like, what can I do that's great? Exactly. What can I do that's outstanding? What can I leave behind in terms of my achievements or abilities, intellectual or physical, or whatever it might be? Mm -hmm. We're always thinking about that. I can't quite get to that because I'm so bogged down with the family. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah, I have to yeah. do what I have to do. I'm gonna be a good man as best as I can be there. But what is it, from, because your, your point is, your vocation is your call to greatness. Right, right. A lot of times we think that, like you just said, the vocation is in the way of us achieving greatness, right? Mm -hmm. But the vocation is actually the path to greatness. And that's where it, had, it was a paradigm shift for me. I had to totally switch, you know, the way I approached life. But what I found is the mm -hmm. two, fatherhood, great, greatness and fatherhood, and St. Joseph were actually one. And so by going to St. Joseph, it was, I began to just see fatherhood through in a whole different light. Mm -hmm. And then I saw it as that call to greatness, yeah. Well, I thought we were going to go in other directions here, and we might, but there's this thing of greatness. You're, you're big on fatherly greatness. Mm -hmm. You keep using that phrase there. And I, and I don't think there's a lot of fa that many fathers that say, you know, what's, what does that mean, greatness mm -hmm. and fatherly mm -hmm. greatness? Unpack that a little bit. I love when you that. say fatherly greatness, yeah. what, do you, what do you mean? Well, this is, okay, so Jesus Christ in John's Gospel, three times he talks about when the Son of Man will be lifted up, right? And the Greek word he uses, hypsao, can mean lifted up in exaltation, okay, like a king, but can also mean lifted up in torture, execution. Wow. And Jesus uses this in John 3, 8, and 12, you know, interchangeably. So what is Jesus saying? 
your glory, your exaltation will come through your crucifixion. Mm -hmm. So the, in, in son though he was, he learned obedience and that's how he was perfected, right? Perfected in his sacrifice. So the goal for every man to be glorified is to sacrifice his life for the sake of another, especially for his wife and his children. What, this is what we don't understand is the sacrificial responsibility of a man is actually glory, okay? Yes. That's, the, that's the greatness we're talking about mm -hmm. here. But I and think, that's leaving the legacy. And I think that's too for a woman. Yeah. And you, your greatest sacrifice in a woman and being a wife and a mother as opposed to the mm. riches and everything that the world, all the bells and whistle, whistles that are out there that lure you away from giving up your life mm -hmm. that your children would have a life. Yes. You know, I had the privilege of being a stay-at-home mom for 22 years, and mm. it, it was a sacrifice. Yes. Financially, there was less, but it was the richest life, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So it's really in losing our life that we find our life, and there is the greatest joy of the reward in serving and in yeah, loving. Exactly. Why don't we get that? Yeah, well, and I'm called to protect that. Mm -hmm. So as a husband, I'm called to protect your beauty. I'm called to protect your life-giving ability. All that that you just spoke about, that is my job to sacrifice myself to ensure mm -hmm. that you have that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's well said. I'm thinking as, as we're sharing, we're speaking about sacrifice and it's in giving that we receive. It's in dying that we're born to everlasting life. So, so giving is, is the key, sacrifice is the key, the Trinity's giving mm, to one mm. another. Um, but St. John Paul II says the feminine genius, and it's almost like women have a head start <laughs> in terms of sacrifice, yeah. just because of their, their nature, their bodies, everything's about giving, you know, in the body. Mm -hmm. And first time I saw Joy giving birth to our first child, I mean, the, the pain of that, what she mm -hmm. was going through, I thought she was going to die. I was saying, like, I don't know if we're going to do this again. <laughs> uh, what, what did we do? Yeah. Right, so uh, our part is so small, in a sense, mm -hmm. in terms of the physical, what mm -hmm. we contribute, and she's going nine months, and then she's almost in a dying thing, but mm -hmm. I've done a little part as a progenitor. But then my part, as you were saying, I'm to protect that. Mm -hmm. I'm to care for that, at, at, the, at the giving of my life for that. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of choose the way of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. For women that choose the way of marriage and having a child, it's laid on them. I mean, it's just laid on them. Mm -hmm. For us, we have to choose this way, and we can be selfish, and there's a lot of selfish men, no, I mean, so. we're selfish to some degree, even unto death to say, well, you are pregnant, but now is not the time, and I want you to abort this mm -hmm. embryo, this fetus, and God's mercy comes to those of us that have experienced that and have done that. So it's the selfishness thing. Mm. So we need the other as the yeah. way of sacrifice. But we got to learn that way. We got to choose that way of sacrifice. Oh, absolutely. And many are not doing that. Mm. Many men are not doing that. And it's to the ruin of our culture and of our church. Yeah, and it's so true. Like John Paul II said, in, I think Mulieris Dignitatum, where he said that men, in a certain sense, have to learn their fatherhood from their wives, which is crazy. If you think about it, yeah. precisely because of what you're saying, it's built in that they sacrifice. They are doing that just by giving birth. But we have to kind of learn that, you yeah. know? And my experience was the same. When I saw my wife stretched out on a gurney in a crucifixion form and they cut her belly wide open two ways to extract our daughter out, I'm right. thinking, mm -hmm. This is amazing. She's dying. She's literally. giving her body and yeah. her blood right. in order, in order right. to give right. life. Blood That's Christ. Right. That's Christ on the cross. Yeah. You know, amazing. But yes, yeah, so we have to learn how to sacrifice. Yeah. Well, we have this crisis of fatherhood. <clears throat> how did we get here? Oh my goodness! How did we get here? Well, Marxism led to radical feminism. Radical feminism, like the foundress of some, one of the foundresses of radical feminism, she would at the beginning of every rally she'd have this chant: "How do we?" begin the cultural revolution, the cultural revolution, that's Marxism, you know? Well, by destroying the American patriarch. Mm -hmm. So that's the father, boom. How do we destroy the American patriarch? By destroying monogamy. How do we destroy monogamy? Introducing homosexuality, pornography, eroticism, mm -hmm. all that. So here we are today. So basically, as Jesus says in Mark, I think 328, he says, if you want to plunder the strong man's house, you've got to bind the strong man. Then you can have his way with his goods. Well, that's what has happened. Satan, through temptation, intimidation, distraction, isolation, all these tactics, he has bound the strong man, the father, in order to have his way with the wife and the children. And here we are today, guys don't even know what their mission is anymore. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. You know, back to what you said about this idea of giving. Yeah. We've lost touch with what it means to be happy, right? <clears throat> and scientists have proven that there are two G's, actually three G's, to being happy. And that is when you give and when you're grateful and you, and you go to God for both. Mm -hmm. So you go to God for, to be generous. You go mm -hmm. to God in gratefulness. 
dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, all are released in your brain simultaneously, which gives you happiness. Mm -hmm. And you can be selfish and get that shot, but then you gotta keep being selfish to get that shot. I, but like when you're giving and grateful, it's like a slow drip mm -hmm. of happiness that's going on and on in your life. And mm -hmm. you guys could probably attest to this just in the ministry that you're doing. Yeah. But that's the key. If we wanna be happy, we've gotta give. And that give, giving comes through sacrifice and sacrifice comes through those two Latin words, sacer, which means sacred, facere, to make. So we need to make ourselves sacred unto the Lord, hand ourselves over to him. Mm -hmm. Well, we were made to love, right? <laughs> yeah. We were made yeah. to love. Yeah. And when all we do is love ourselves mm. and this culture of take a picture of me and here mm. and me and me, I mean, it's ad nauseum, it's so sickening. Yes. Right, and so we have to teach. Fathers have to teach sacrifice. Jim would come home from work and we would say, yay, daddy's <laughs> home. And then when the children would want things that the world wanted and we would always say, we use things, mm -hmm. we throw them away, mm -hmm. we use them, we love people, Amen. right? Yes. But you have to say that and you have to keep mm -hmm. saying that because the world tells us we love things mm -hmm. and forget about the people. Yep. And from a guy and I can have that girl, I'll have her and I use her and I'm a player and she's gone mm -hmm. exactly. and I'll use somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's the destruction of the man. Amen. Because he was made for more. Yeah, that's right. right? And so we have to, as women, we have to teach. We have to teach our sons. We have to teach our grandsons. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I, your greatest mission is ahead of you with your grandsons yeah, and raising so. them up to be holy men of God, yeah, right? I hope so. So we have to bring it back. We have to represent it to a culture that has really lost its way. Now babies are coming out and are we saying you're male or female? Are you a boy <sighs> or a girl? You can decide when you right, go and right. you'll find your way. Mm -hmm. We've really lost our way. Yes, we have. <laughs> and with Amen. the culture saying, you know, you can't identify them. They have mm -hmm. to identify themselves and men buying into that, because mm -hmm. we just don't want the argument, that's the enemy binding the man, isn't it? Absolutely. Because we can't defend, you know, how dare you, I know what this is, biologically and anatomically and genetically, this is, you know, uh, but instead we're cowering back or we're, we're bowing at the altar of, you know, group think and the media and mm -hmm. technologies, you know, mm -hmm. social media and, and being so on. woke. So, so, yeah. so yes. what, what are your answers to help guys in the midst of this attack, you know, upon masculinity, because if, if you stand up for something different, then you're a toxic male, or you're this, you're that. Yeah, be, what not, are, what are you be not afraid of who you really say, are, okay. mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, it comes down to identity, right? Your identity leads to your destiny. And I'm not talking about transient identity because, you know, there's trans truth and there's transcendent truth. Your sex really doesn't change even if you get a sex change. It's impossible. A guy who gets a sex change becomes, well, he can't have a, he can't have a baby. He can't do what a woman is supposed to do. A woman who gets a sex change as a man, she cannot impregnate a woman, right? Mm -hmm. She's, so the point here is, is that our identity really doesn't change, okay? And our identity is given to us by God. And if you are a father, that's part of your identity. And so we need to understand our identity so that we can lead people to their destiny, including ourselves. That's the key. It all comes down to identity, identity in Christ. And if you think about Jesus Christ, you look at the passion narrative, it's all about him maintaining and proclaiming his identity. Mm -hmm. Three times in the garden, which one of you is Jesus of Nazareth? He has to attest to his human nature, I am. Before Caiaphas, are you the son of the living God? He attests to his divine nature. Before Pilate, are you a king? I am, you, know, you, you say that I am. So he attests to his identity and he gets beaten for it and killed for it. Mm -hmm. That's the key. We men, we know that's what we're made for. We're no, we know we're meant to go into the ring and we may not come back out for the sake of our identity and for the sake of our families and for the sake of the church and the world. Mm -hmm. This is the key. We gotta go to the cross. Right. right. And we have to believe the Bible when it says, what is it, does it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Yeah, we have right? to. We have to believe that. And it's like, I'm not going to lose my soul over this. I'm not going to lose my soul over a job. I'm not going to mm -hmm. compromise my ethics, my morals, my beliefs, my values. And mm -hmm. we have to stand strong. Amen. But they need men's groups to be in. <laughs> right, right, we're gonna exactly. take a break at this point, but we're going to hold you over for the next segment. Okay. So it's still great to speak with you. And we'll be hearing more from... Uh, Devin Shad, Fathers of St. Joseph.org, Fathers of St. Joseph.org. Go there for all of his books, his ways of training. You'll be so very encouraged. We need to teach our sons and our daughters about the greatness of St. Joseph and about fatherly greatness. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and we're going to continue our conversation with Devin. And I know, Jim, you wanted to ask him this question. Of course. Uh, our Holy Father has written the apostolic letter, Patris Cordiae, mm -hmm. the Father's heart, the heart of the Father. And so I just want your reflections on that, what you see in that mm -hmm. that's uh, so powerful and relevant and how it fits with your own spirituality on St. Joseph. Yeah, for such a time as this, he, I mean, he wrote this letter. And I think that Pope Francis does something that none of his predecessors have done. And rather than calling St. Joseph foster father or putative father or any of those adjectives, he just goes right to the heart of it and he says, Joseph is father. And that's the whole point of his apostolic letter. And we have to ask, why? Why is that the main thrust of this, or this apostolic letter? It is because we need to understand what a father is in this time, in this age, because this is the void. Because as society goes, so goes the family, right? Mm. But the family goes as the father goes, as that spiritual leader, that sacrificial head, if you will. And so it's important that we get down, back down to the basics with St. Joseph. I think that's what the Holy Father is really getting at with this letter. Yeah, yeah there was some uh, study that came out, and I, I'm sure I don't have the stats right, maybe I do, but it said when a father you know, goes to church and leads his family. It's mm -hmm. like 80% mm -hmm. of the families, you know, will go. Mm -hmm. If the father's not involved, it's down to like a very small percentage. Yeah, so, so if the mother's the first to convert to Christianity, there's a 17, 1-7% probability that the family will follow. If the father's the first to convert to Christianity, there's a 93% mm -hmm. probability, probability that the family will follow. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. So it's built into the system. God's built it in that within the man, is hardwired this sense of sacrificial responsibility. People follow that, they, they want to follow that, they're looking for that, and when that man does that, whoa, the family will follow, you know? Yeah. And, and when the marriage is unified, that dance of love between mm -hmm. the husband and wife, that flows out into the children, you right. know? And the beautiful thing, and I've seen it in my marriage and in the marriage of my children, when the father takes his rightful place as the spiritual authority mm. in the home, mm. You know, I mean, that that's just as opposed to yeah. the woman like, mm -hmm. well, I know God and me and God got this thing and your mm -hmm. father, oh, he's over there and he's going to read the paper or whatever, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like right. assume your rightful place as being the spiritual Except authority. You use the term charitable authority. Yeah, don't you? charitable authority. Yeah, exactly. So Joseph was given charitable authority, authority to author in a sense, but charitable, obviously, to love. But we look at St. Joseph. This is beautiful because... After the Annunciation with Mary, nowhere, after, after that point, all the divine directives from heaven for the Holy Family were given to St. Joseph. Mm. He's the least perfect member of the Holy Family. I mean, you got the Son of God, you got the Mother of God, the Son, and you got St. Joseph. And yet God is directing the Holy Family through him. So this is the, the example mm -hmm. and it's saying, hey, Dad, if you don't think you're the most holy person in your family, you still have to get with it. Mm -hmm. You have an awesome office of authority and God will bless your family if you assume that charitable authority, the authority to lead by loving and love by leading. If you do that, God will bless your family with favor. Mm -hmm. But you gotta step in and bless your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's real. You gotta yeah. bless your kids every day, bless your wife every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. We just have about a minute left. Uh, that's, is that one of the pillars? You mentioned four pillars. Just yes. tell us the titles of those yeah, pillars. Yeah, so embrace silence. Embrace, embrace silence. Yep, so Joseph embraced silence. Embrace woman, he embraced Mary, and took her burdens on as his own. Embrace the child, he embraced a child who wasn't his own and spiritually fostered him, adopted him, made him his own son. And then embrace your charitable authority to lead by loving and love by leading. Devin, thanks so much yeah. for beginning just to open up a little bit about the spirituality that the Lord has allowed you to see in St. Joseph and to give to the church at this very time. Look forward to sharing more tomorrow. Thank Thanks for being with us today. You're never alone. You're an important part of this EWTN family and you're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Life, marriage, the family, the church will prevail. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.